Now, we've got this lovely redundancy. We've got our core distribution and access model and everything's running fine. And, oh no, we've got an interface problem on R1. So we've got R2 sitting there, but PC1 says, oh no, I can't reach my default gateway anymore. It's cut off from the network, even though there's all this lovely, beautiful redundancy in the back end, PC number one can't actually utilize it or get to it. So we need to offer our, our clients a first hop redundancy. So let's have a look at how we get that achieved. We have the router on the left and the router on the right. The router, they are both, they can both re touch the internet and they can both gain access to the LAN. But what they're doing is they're talking to each other and they're creating a virtual gateway. And that gray router in the middle, that doesn't exist. That's a virtual IP address. And that's what we tell all of our clients to use for the default gateway. This way, if for any reason, the router on the left dies or fails, the router on the right will take over the responsibility of servicing that 192.0.2.100. So the clients don't even know. They don't even know anything has changed at all. And that's really, really useful. So we're, we're providing a virtual default gateway so that we've got a couple of routers working together for redundancy, our first hop redundancy. HSRP is the one we'll spend the most time on, basically because that's Cisco's proprietary uh, first hop redundancy protocol, but it's also got a lot of extra features that the other two don't have. So we'll look at what, what the others, what they all do, but we'll spend most of the time focusing on HSRP. Now, HSRP has got a really interesting feature, which some of them don't have, is that not only do they present with a virtual IP address, they present with a virtual MAC address as well. So this way, when the main router dies and you fail over to the backup router or the standby router, the clients don't even need to re-up or anything because it's the same virtual MAC address as well. And HSRP identifies itself with a vendor code for virtual MAC address. So whenever you're looking at a MAC address table and you see 00000C07AC, that's HSRP, that's fixed. And there's a group number. What is the group all about? We'll talk about that in a minute. But in this example, that's group number one because the last two characters are zero, 01. Uh, the forwarding router and the standby router or the active router and the standby router talk to each other with little multicasts every three seconds. So that's how they keep track of each other. So if you're setting up an access list or a policy control, you better make sure that UDP 1985 is allowed between them. So if they can't, if they miss three hellos, then the standby router assumes that the currently active router is dead and will take over the responsibility. And because the MAC address changes, you don't, the clients don't need to learn a new MAC address. So these are the commands. We have got the left-hand router and the right-hand router, and these are the commands we've got to going. So let's go through and break these down one at a time. First of all, we've got IP address 172.16.10.5. And on the right, we've got 172.16.10.6. So they're the real addresses. And have a look at the standby command. Standby 10, IP address 172.16.10.1 is identical for both. That's the virtual IP address that they're going to be using. Now, priority. When you get the opportunity to choose which one is going to be active and which one's going to be standby. So the default is 100. So as soon as you set the priority above 100, then that router is always going to be the, the, the currently active router. So as you see with the right-hand router, I've set the priority to 90. So that one's always going to wake up and by default, it's going to be the stand-up. The word preempt is really, really important. I have no idea why it's not default, but it's there. So what happens when left-hand router dies and the right-hand router takes control? When the left-hand router comes back without that word preempt, then the right-hand router would just stay forwarding, even though it's got a priority of 90 and the left-hand router has got a priority of 120. So the word preempt means that every single time a router wakes up and says, hello, I'm here with HSRP, there's an election. And they say, right, actually, you know what? 
I am the boss and I'll stay the boss or I am the boss. Oh no, there's someone with a higher priority than me. So I'm going to now let them become the boss in my place. Preempt. Now the track, we don't talk much about tracking, but it's a very, very useful tool to use things. So for example, in this example, we're tracking serial zero. So if our serial interface goes down, then we're not going to be able to see the internet anymore. So there's no point for me to be the default gateway. So what I'm going to do is if my internet goes down, my serial interface goes down, I'm going to decrement my priority by 40. Therefore, my priority is now 80. So within, so the next three hellos, the right hand router is going to say, well, actually I'm better than you now. So he's going to announce himself as the new active router and the left router will become the standby. Then once that one that's once that serial interface eventually returns, then we're going to have the priority jump back to 120 because the preempt exists. Therefore the, there'll be a new election and then the left hand router will take on responsibility again. You can use, you can track lots of things. You can track routes, you can track SLAs. Tracking is a really useful tool and you, but it's not really covered, but it's, it's, we we'll, we can talk about it later. The group number, the group number is really important. What that means is you can have multiple standby. You can have four routers and you'd have two default gateways and you'd have group 10 and group 11 or something like that. The other reason why the group number is important as well is because it gives you a unique MAC address. And I'm a big fan of unique MAC addresses because some older Cisco switches don't like the same MAC address appearing on two different VLANs because HSRP is the same MAC address. So you don't want, you don't want five, a router with five VLANs on it all using the same MAC address. It, so it's better. It's just a best practice, you know, VLAN 10, group 10, VLAN 20, group 20, VLAN 50, group 50. The only drawback is your group numbers have to stop at 255. So if you've got VLAN 500, then you might have to be a bit more creative with your group numbers. Show standby, super duper useful command. So let's break down the comparison between the show standby command and the actual commands that were programmed. So three seconds, 10 seconds, default hold down timers. Standby 10 priority 95 preempt. That's the command we typed. So the group number 10. Remember it's a hexadecimal MAC address. That's why it's zero A in the MAC address. 95 is the priority. Preempt means may preempt. So standby 10 IP address and the IP address you want. Once again, the group number. That's the actual hot standby IP address. That's the actual, that's the IP address. Currently, this router is in standby. It says the local state is standby and the standby router is local. And you can see just above that line, the active router is 172.16.10.5. So that's the actual real IP address of the currently active router. And it expires in nine seconds. Once again, if no priority is set, then whoever speaks first will become active. But if there's no priority, but there's preempt set, then the person with the highest real address will become active. And I've sort of already talked about why I need a group number. I like a, the group numbers because I like the MAC address to be unique so that there's no way that a switch on the fringe of your network can see the same MAC address on two different VLANs and get confused. Now, there are two other standards we're going to look at. So HSRP is the Cisco proprietary, but we also have VRRP or Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol and GLBP, Gateway Load Balancing Protocol. So Gateway Load Balancing Protocol is also Cisco proprietary, but it has a few caveats and a few little idiosyncrasies that are different to HSRP. So rather than um, an active and a passive, it has a forwarding and a standby, but they're both working. So they just do a round robin. So every second ARP request that comes along will be given to 
the user. So when PC1 does an ARP, it may go to the left-hand router. PC2 does an ARP, it may go to the right-hand router. PC3 does an ARP, it may go to the left-hand router. So that means what that means is that the MAC addresses are still to, are still real. So they've got a virtual IP address, but physical MAC addresses. So when the forwarding router fails, we have to rely on the ARP cache timeout and the client to be broken and then do a fresh ARP and get the new MAC address for the virtual IP address of 192.168.2.100. So because the MAC address is tied, the users may notice a bit of a downtime. However, all the routers are forwarding. So you've got double the amount of bandwidth. So, you know, swings and roundabouts on GLBP. So HSRP, a bit of, a lot of text, sorry about side with too much text so the active router is the default gateway if the active router fails the standby takes over hsrp has versions but you don't really need to know about that but the best thing about version 2 i guess is you can have a higher number than 255 hsrp uses different multicast addresses and supports ipv6 you can also have authentication but we don't we don't we don't really worry about that Election process, you've got to have that priority command and you've got to have that preemption. That's what gives you the ultimate control. You don't want to leave everything set on automatic. Initial, and so when HSRP initializes, then it begins to learn, then it listens to what it multicasts it receives, then it goes to standby. If there's already an active, it'll stay in standby. If there isn't, and if it's alone, it'll go to active. Now, if you got two routers, one standby, one active, when the third one comes along, it will just stay and speak. So yes, you can have three, four, five routers in HSRP group if you want it. Thank you very much. See you on the next one.